people are always asking, is it necessary to know yoga breathing? Is it necessary to do Tai Chi? Is it necessary to, uh, I don't know what the hell, to be psychoanalyzed? And I would ask, necessary for what? Where are you going? What do you want? Yes, sure. If you want to get to New York, it's necessary to take the highway. But where are you going? What do you mean necessary? Well, is it necessary for becoming a Buddha? Anybody want to be a Buddha? <laughs> do you know what it means to be a Buddha? How do you know you want to be a Buddha if you don't know what a Buddha is? People think, well, it would be nice to be, have peace of mind, to be serene, to be calm, to be undisturbed by this, that and the other. But you see, so long as you make all those things objects of desire, you are defining yourself as lacking them. And a person who is looking for peace is obviously in turmoil. A person who is looking to end conflict is in conflict. And so the more you strive to stop the interior commotions, the more you are stirring them up. You are smoothing the waters with flat irons. So then we might, the, then comes up the people who say, all right, now, if you are going to tell us that uh, meditation is not necessary and uh, that it's all here and now, well, then why do you meditate? Why do you have uh, religion at all? Why do you have rights? Why do you chant? Why do you do this, that and the other? Why do you even talk about it? And my answer to that is, uh, there is no good reason for it whatsoever. <laughs> this is a form of joyous energy. And it's a form of dance. Uh, it's a groovy thing to do. There are all kinds of groovy things to do, and to everybody according to his taste. If, you, of course, you you, uh, you you can make anything whatsoever, any human activity, into meditation, simply by being with it, and doing it completely to do it. In other words, when you're, say, swimming, if you really enjoy swimming, you're not swimming to get to the other side of a river or to swim so many yards or any competing with yourself or with other people like that. You're swimming to experience the water rippling past you the floating sensation, uh, to lie on your back and look at the blue sky and the gulls circling in it. You are doing that, every moment of it. You are simply absorbed in this ripply, luminous world, looking at the patterns and the sh shifting net of sunlight underneath you, and the sand way down, see? That's it, that's what it's about, that's what swimming's about. So you're not going anywhere. getting together and uh, chanting together is what a lot of people do when they don't have television to look at. In uh, the jungles, on the steppes, in mountain communities, since as long as anyone can remember, people got together and do a thing I call digging sound. And played with the sonic energy of the universe in just the same way as I described somebody playing with the water while swimming. 
And these people, when they do that, they don't worry about where they're going or what their destiny is or any nonsense of that kind because they're completely alive. So to understand all that I'm trying to say, I would like to see if you could change your basic notions of economics. And I mean the economics of energy. We are always scrimping and saving because our economics are based on scarcity rather than exuberance. But notice that the economics of nature are allegedly wasteful. They're based on exuberance. Many more seeds than are necessary for trees. Many more spermatozoa than are necessary for people. Many more stars than anybody could conceivably want. Galaxies galore! Nature is a vast celebration of energy. But if you complain about this and say, oh dear me, it's all running out, that means, you see, that you are looking for fulfillment in time and you say, if there is not enough future, we won't get the golden goodie we're looking for at the end of the line. See, there is that feeling, there is the great golden goodie. But that flower, the golden goodie, isn't at the end of the line. You're in it. The radiating petals, the mandala, the great circle of the flower, is the galaxy in which you live. It is uh, the whole universe radiating around you in which you are. And this radiation um, is also cycling. It's the dance in which you're involved. If you'd only realize that the purpose of life is not in the future. And if you think it is, you'll go on and on and on looking for it there and never find it. Because the future in its own way fades out in the same way as the past fades out. You get older and older and older. And if you don't come crash, you just peter out. It wasn't there. And you may feel vaguely cheated about the whole thing. You were given the come on. That there was something coming. There was that thing at the end of the line, the golden goodie. You've been sitting in the middle of the golden goodie all the time. 